Good morning. Today we're going to talk about how we can make an app that can address some of the issues and topics associated with the, both computing systems and the impacts that computing has on the world. So we've got a quick little app that we're making right now. And so as part of the assignment, I had you find out some definitions of some of the main things that go along with computer systems and networks. So you could understand those concepts. And then I also had you identify some locations and topics themselves were fit in the area of impacts on computing, like some positive things that computing has done, as well as some negative things that computing has done. And then something that uh, relates to data on that as well. And so what I had you do is I had you gather that information in advance, and then I need you to load that information in a couple of different things. First, you're going to save all of your definitions in a nicely framed PDF, so you can actually talk about some stuff. And then the um, impacts and stuff, you just put those together in a nice little uh, table or whatever information so you can easily retrieve the data that's out of it, like the latitude and the longitude, so we can load it inside this app. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so we can make this app so you can go in and you can load the definitions up to a PDF. And as you can see right here, I can just scroll right through the entire PDF. I'm using an AP exam for my examples right here. And then for each of the impacts, you can click on a location. As you can see, it takes you to a space. You'd have a spot for your location. I managed to randomly pick the Black Sea as a center. I thought it was pretty cool. But um, you can pick some different locations and talk about stuff and address those concepts right here inside the screen about that. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the code that makes this happen so we can have this work and go from there. So again, we're right here inside our main screen, right, uh, that starts everything off. This is the load, um, the main app that we're working for. It's what starts off as content view. Of course, we rename it because we never want to keep content view as the name for what we're working with. But the content view screen is what becomes the main window for that. And as you can see right here, I have inside that, I've got a view and I've got my body. I'm using a navigation view that we've used before so you can hold the things. I've got a section for each of the different topics we're working with, in this case, systems and impacts. In the, um, the system section, I just have it so it loads up this custom view to hold PDF files. And then this, um, the, system, the impacts view, excuse me, I iterate over each of the things we have stored in our impacts list that we've worked with. And I create a navigation link that can go to those, talking about those titles right there. As you can see, I'm using the impacts sub index and impact sub index title to actually refer to those components. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first piece we used to make this happen and then go from there. First, let's go ahead and let's look at the model group. The model group is where we put the pieces of stuff that we're working with to actually store something about the logical structures we're talking to. And the first thing we're going to look at is the computing impact.swift file. So the computing impact.swift is a Swift struct. It's what we're using to hold the information. And it just holds the pieces that we're working with on all the repetitions of stuff we're putting inside that screen. And so as you can see right here, it's a struct named computing impact. It has three pieces of information that we have to keep track of. The MK coordinate region, a string for details, and a string for title. Now, MK is a prefix that indicates we're talking about something that's out of map kit and that's why I have that import map kit right here at the top of the screen and so this struct right here just holds the information we can load into our views as we need it so again this is on that separation of approach of model view and controller and we're taking the components that we need to actually know information about and storing it on its own and then sending the information off to our view that we've been working with all of our projects so far and then the details and the title well they're pretty self-explanatory don't need to go into a lot of detail on that and so we take that computing impact thing, and so we go up here to our controller, and we're going to link that um, with our impact detail screen. Our impact detail screen is how I get that information, actually show it on the file. The way we do that is we go inside our impact detail. We have an at state var, which is that property wrapper that says, hey, this is important. Keep track of me. And especially we need to have an at state var because we're working with a map, and map requires a binding value attached to it, and we get that again with that lovely dollar sign right here. But we have the at state var um, impact right here. And it's a computing impact, so I reference each individual impact detail screen with an associated computing impact instance. And so I have that data, that state data that belongs to that instance of it. And so then I go inside the body of it, and it's got a VStack, oh, no big deal. And I'm putting inside that VStack a map and a text. Now, map requires a single parameter for its initializer, it's a coordinate region, and that's that spot, that 2D location of space that is said, oh, where are you on the globe? And so it puts that location in there. Now, that space has an arbitrarily specific, um, specified um, angle or delta attachment. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But all that is is just a center with a how big are you going to be to look at that screen. And so that's what we're saying right there. And we just set a frame um, height of 400 because I don't want to take up the entire screen. And then just the details that go along with it. So you can talk about the details. You answer your question about why that space is important and using that on the globe. And so that is how we can load those in piece by piece. And then we can go back into our impact and systems view. And for each impact inside our list that goes along with that, I can put each of those screens on each of those things on the screen, going like right here from this and going back and forth. So let's go see how I can load that up and actually load those um, impacts into the structure. We're going to make that happen by using a method called load impact data. Now this load impact data is inside my 
um, impact data file. It's just a, a helper um, or utility file we're working with. I've got it inside the model group because it deals with the data we're actually loading. It would also fit really nicely inside my resources group as well, but that's just a stylistic choice. Of course, I have to import MapKit and SwiftUI for the component pieces I'm talking to inside this. And so I'm using a load impact data right here. It's going to return an array or a list of computing impact instances. Inside that funk, I make a var called impact items, and it's a computing impact array type, and I initialize it to be nothing because, hey, at least it holds something, maybe empty, but it's there at the start. The first thing I need to do is I need to pick a region. Now, the regions themselves are CL location coordinate 2Ds, aka core location, location coordinate, two-dimensional. So it's a space on a 2D map. Okay, no big deal. Now, I just simply just put a whole bunch of random numbers in here by keyboard mashing and then cutting some numbers out to make sure that they'd actually be valid because latitude and longitude have actual ranges you have to concern yourself with. But that's what we did right here. And then I have an associated set of details and um, titles for each of those different spots. So you have to have a string value for each associated core location because we're mapping them one to one to make sure we go through that and have a nice little buildup of our information. Then we use the for in loop structure inside Swift. Now the for in Swift is a little bit different than the for each in Java or regular for loop in Java as well. So a for in, as I say, I have an index right here and then I specify a range. In this case, the range I'm specifying is from zero up to, but not including four, because when we're talking about data structures, especially linear data structures in Java, Swift, C, C++, etc., the first index is always zero and we go up to whatever the size minus one is. And so that's gonna go from zero up to, but not four, because there's in a spot of four, there's zero, one, two, three spots there. And then I'm going to make a single use variable using a let. I'm going to say it's a current region and I'm going to make an MK coordinate region. And I'm passing it as a center the regions at that index that were used from this array right here that we just um, created. And then for the span, I'm just using a, a default span of 10 degrees delta for each latitude and longitude. So a nice little on that right there. If you wanted to change this, of course, you could so have a different area of space you're covering inside that map. But this is just a quick way to show those locations on the map and have some information for it. Then I'm going to take that um, coordinate region I just made. I'm going to put that in as part of my computing impact um, creation right here. So I'm going to append it to impact items and make a new computing location and pass it that region. And then the details subindex and the titles subindex so I can get the associated details and titles for each of those different pieces that I can actually load inside the screen, which allows me to have my app work. And that's how I can make the first part of my app work, all the stuff about the impacts of computing that it has right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other part, talking about the definitions and how we can see the computer systems in action. For this part, I wanted you to be able to load a PDF inside your screen. Now, in order to load a PDF in the screen, we have to use a little bit of a different structure. So we're gonna go back up here to our view um, section. And inside our view, we have a file right here called pdfkitview.swift. So the first part we have is our PDF kit view, and of course our preview that we're not worried about right now. But what I wanna draw your attention to right now is I have, of course, I have my import for PDF kit. And then in order to make something I can use with this, this is a holdover for bring some stuff that was from um, UI kit and bring it into Swift UI. And so I have to make something that's a UI view representable. So I have to actually convert it for that. And so making a PDF kit represented view because it's something that uses PDF kit, which is based off of UI view and U, um, UI view controller. And I wanna make it so I can work with um, Swift UI. So to do so, I have to, of course, get the URL for that file that we're working with. I'm making a init for that, so I initialize self.urls URL, standard init right there. I like using names because it makes sense for me. And then I have to have two required methods in order to fit this um, protocol or conform to the protocol of UIView of Resendable. I have to have the methods make UIView and update UIView. Now, I'm not doing anything at all in my um, update UIView method. It has to be there for it to work, but I'm not doing anything with it because I'm not changing my view at all. So eh, it's just empty stuff. However, my make UI view is really important. In my make UI view, I have to have a context right there and it's gonna return a sum UI view, which is those views that I can use all rots right inside Swift UI. I know. So the first thing we need to do right here is we need to make a let PDF view as a PDF view. So I'm gonna initialize what view right there. I'm then going to initialize that document by passing a PDF document, passing the URL that I just grabbed when I initialized this. And then I'm gonna set the auto scales to be true and my display to direction to be dot horizontal. Now you can also use dot vertical if you wanna scroll up and down. I chose horizontal just so I could give a little demo for this, but there's other features you can choose on that as well. And you make those choices again before you return that PDF view, which brings it back in so I can actually show this on the screen. Now that I've made that represented view right here, I'm gonna go collapse this back out. And that's what I actually put inside right here inside my PDF kit view. And I'm gonna say PDF kit view represented view is a URL from definitions. And definitions is how I load something from my bundle. Cause I have inside my resources file, I've got a couple different PDFs right here that I could load. And all I need to do is go back to my impact data file. And inside here, I made a quick little one-liner where I set let definitions equal bundle.main.url for resource. And I passed it 2012Q with extension PDF. So that means I'm gonna unload <clears throat> I'm going to upload that 2012 questions uh, file that's a PDF extension and I'm going to use the force unwrap with the exclamation point right here because I guarantee it's in here because 
I put inside my project. Now again, in code that you're actually putting in production, never ever use that force unwrap because that's a bad idea. But when you're making something right here that you're making for yourself and just demoing something out, a force unwrap is good because you know the file's right there. And so that's how we can get that in. I then load that right in here with that URL for definitions that builds it right there and it puts the view right here in the screen. And so that's how I can make that work. So again, I'm gonna take a quick little look at this really fast again. I have my lovely little uh, body right here. I set my impacts to be load impact data so I can load all those impacts that we talked about and found and researched. I then make that in a, sort in a variable called impacts. And I then grab that right here. I go to systems, I load my PDF kit with a label with definitions that puts that label right there. I go to my section right here for my text impacts and for each thing that's inside that impacts a list or array that I just made, I make an index for it and I can reference the pieces out of it by impact detail, make a new impact detail screen, pass an impact subindex as the detail and my label is impacts detail, um, impact subindex dot title so I can get the title right out of it. Now that first, second, third, fourth of course is not what you'd actually want to do but for demo purposes with me, see before you get started, it's totally fine. And that's how you can make your data and systems app and talk about the issues that are associated with computer networks and systems, as well as some of the impacts of computing and address that for here. Thanks again and have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.